Daring Abroad, brought to you in partnership with Cop Bank Diaspora Banking. Banking just like home. Hello and welcome to the show. My name is Michael Zimanji, your tour guide, as you get to see the world from the comfort of your living room. Today, we are in Saudi Arabia as we focus on domestic workers there, their experience, their challenges, and how the Saudi and Kenyan governments are supporting them. We shall also take you to Germany and have a taste of authentic Kenyan cuisine from Kenyan-born Carol Waidera. And because seeing is believing, here are our highlights. One of the nationalities that we are happy to uh, deploy from is Kenya. Life as a Kenyan domestic worker in Saudi. The pros, the cons, the impact. I've managed to build a house for my parents. Plus, what is being done by both governments to ensure worker welfare. We are in the process of negotiating a higher minimum wage. From Germany, a taste of home with Carol Waidera, Kenyan lawyer turned restaurant owner. Living abroad has taught me to be very authentic. As Cooperative Bank shares how the diaspora can get their start in Kenya's money markets. With as little as 500 shillings, you can get a taste of the Nairobi Securities Exchange. Great, let's now go to Saudi for our first story. It's a typical Tuesday morning for Catherine Jerry Kehiko as she teaches her third class of the day. Then after you wash, wipe as you take. This is the norm for her since relocating to Saudi over four years ago. Fold the towel four times. Yes, Catherine is a trainer with Ayadi Academy, a training facility owned by Mahara Human Resources Company, one of the biggest Saudi recruitment agencies in the kingdom. Here, newly recruited domestic workers from all over the globe are taught basics of taking care of a Saudi household. Number one is housekeeping. We also teach them how to use the machines in the kitchen, like a dishwashing machine. From the kitchen, we go to the bedroom, how to do the dara cleaning in the bedroom, how to make the bed, how to use the vacuum. I also go to the child assimilation. In child assimilation, we teach the girls how to take good care of children with special needs. And also, in case of first aid, how should they give that, that baby first aid? In case of choke, how should she do? In case of uh, nose bleeding, how should she do it? In case of fainting, how should she help the baby? In addition, the recruits are also taught about the Saudi culture, language, and their cuisines. Being a trainer, Catherine holds an important position at Mahara, but the question still remains, how exactly did she end up at such a level? Well, it has everything to do with her background. Before I came here, back in Kenya, I was a teacher. I was a preschool teacher in Kenya, Nairobi City, Travers Academy. I also did Green River Academy in around Moiki area. So I first developed the zeal to come in Saudi because I look at the environment. I needed to raise my status of education. I needed a better life. So I decided to inquire from friends. How can I walk out from Kenya and go to overseas? I got one friend called Mama Gishohi. She directed to me to Fridges Academy. I studied for two weeks. After two weeks, within a month, my passport was out and I came to Saudi in Mahara accommodation. Hey. Hi. 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 
Usually we contact the agencies abroad, either in Kenya, in Uganda, and other countries in East Asia. Once we start the process, we visit the embassy first to get the approval from the embassy. Otherwise, we will not be able to bring any people without the approval of the embassy. Once we get the approval from the embassy, there is a platform called Musanid, which helps the agencies and the mega recruitment company to communicate and govern all the conditions and all the procedures over there. So we request that with the agency that we need this, those kind of requirements. We need the age, it should be between this and this. If they do have any experience in the Gulf countries or outside the Gulf, it will be needed. All the skills we need, we ask for them. And then they usually provide it on the platform. We have to choose, select the CV, which is suitable. And then we start to recruit them here in Saudi. Once they arrive in Saudi, we do have a team in the airport so that they can receive them so that when they arrive here they don't feel lost at all they come here they will find a representative of our company they will take them to the bus and then they will take them to the accommodation to have a snack first because they have a flight and do everything and then we start the processing of the training before we deploy them to the client one of the nationality that we are happy to uh, deploy from is Kenyan and uh, we feel that we are from the society, from the Kenyan people and the society, Kenyan society. We are happy to deal with this country while there are more values that we saw from uh, Kenyan people, okay? Mahara deployed more than 130,000 workers during the last 10 years. We started with Kenya only in 2019 and we deployed from them more than 5,000 workers. And we are happy that to deploy more. Currently, Saudi has over 2.2 million households, being served by about 4 million domestic workers. Typically, training newly relocated domestic workers takes 5 to 10 days. And comparing with other recruitment agencies in Saudi, like Tamkin and Al Mutahida, this is common practice. Similar to Mahara, both Tamkin and Al Mutahida have Kenyan trainers. Four. Mimi ni professor wa Kenya pamoja na Uganda. Pamoja huwa ni msaidizi wa Filipino na wa Indonesia. Kwa jumla huwa ni wasaidia sana katika kazi ya kuwafunza jinsi ambavyo wanafanya usafi. Showing them directions, teaching on how to speak Arabic and also fallations and directions on how to stay in Saudi Arabia. Our relationship with the Kenya it's very strong relationship and we have uh, here in, in our company more than uh, 2000 workers working in our company uh, from Kenya in different sector, in business sector, also in individual sector. And the Kenyan, uh, very hard worker people, and they are doing very well so far. And our, you know, the, the chemistry, to be honest with you, it's very good. Now, we can't talk about Kenyan domestic workers in Saudi without addressing the elephant in the room, worker welfare. One of the ways the Saudi government is ensuring this is eradication of the kafala system, allowing every foreign worker to retain their passport. The right of workers is one of our top priority. Therefore, we launched several initiatives to ensure that all employees, their rights are secured and they are working in a good work condition. One of those initiatives is a wage protection system we established this system in 2013, which is linked with all banks in Saudi Arabia under the minister of this ministry. We completed the full implementation of this uh, program in 2020. Currently, all employees in private sector are receiving their salaries under this system, which enabled the ministry to monitor the monthly payment and due time and due amount. In addition to these programs, we have more than 800 inspectors are distributed through the region. We conduct more over a million field visits where we visit employers to ensure on site that employers are comply with the law. And uh, regarding human trafficking, uh, the ministry uh, designated a department that covering all the human trafficking. We are building capabilities in our uh, either staff and also increasing awareness among employees and employers about all the indicators of human trafficking to ensure that they are not part of any misconduct or behavior that lead to a human trafficking.
Of course, this is in collaboration with the Kenyan government. One of the things we did is to add a facility that is manned by the Saudi government where any person having labor complaints can call in. All right, and they walk you through the various ways of reporting, uh, labor concerns that you have, and basically this is how to deal with an employer probably who's abusive, an employer who does not pay you, and that kind of thing. There is a reporting system, and you don't even have to go to a government office, you can call in. It's a toll-free hotline that we have shared on our social media, and I'm happy to share it with you. We continue to ask people to actually write to us when they are in distress. When we receive a call through the call center, or from the application about some cases from the workers, we go and make investigation and check the cases that or the issue that informed by the workers. They call us, then we send them the car to take them. In terms of payment for domestic work, we are in the process of negotiating a new BLA. And one of the things in the new BLA is actually a higher minimum wage for domestic workers coming from Kenya. These renewed efforts by stakeholders ensure Saudi remains a viable option for Kenyan domestic workers like Catherine. And looking at the impact it has had in their lives, their decision to dare here makes a lot of sense. My first priority was my family. I've been able to support my mom, taking my siblings to school. And uh, thank God, where I was then is not where I am today. I came here to achieve my goal. So far, so good. I've managed to build a house for my parents and uh, I have managed to save something. And for anyone thinking of following in their footsteps, this is their advice. I'd like to tell girls, Mukija kutoka Kenya, follow the instruction. Kama umeleto na company, stay in the company. Usitake pesa haraka haraka and you run away. But outside, nobody to take care of your safety. Nothing is easier sir, anywhere. So, wakati had challenges ziko kama ni Kenya, Ata Saudi pano challenges ziko. Lakini inabidi uwe na how you can be able to handle the challenges. Let's accept it's a country with its own rules and regulations. Let's be under the law, let's be humble, and then let's not forget we are here for a purpose. That purpose, that goal, let's focus on that, nothing else. For those who want to try, they can come and work. If you have confidence on yourself, you can go everywhere you want. Quite inspirational from Saudi Arabia and with that, time for us to go on a short break. But when we return... Living abroad has taught me to be very authentic. A taste of authentic African cuisine in Germany. Also ahead, how to get started in the securities market with Cooperative Bank. Guys! Yes! It's bigger and it's better. Bamba Nyumba na AMG Wilters. We're not giving out just a shamba, we're giving out a shamba with a house. Nyumba. Isitoshe. We have weekly gift vouchers. A 50 by 100 plot at the end of every month. Let me tell you what you need to do. It is very simple. For every 100,000 Kenya shillings that you're spending with us on any of our properties, you automatically get an entry into the Bamba Nyumba draw and stand a chance to win prize number one, gift uh, number two, and number three. So contact us today. Own your dream home for as low as 1.98 million Kenya shillings in Vipingo Kilifi and enjoy a flexible payment plan of 10% on signing of the letter of offer and the balance in equal monthly installments within 18 months. Supported by world-class amenities and infrastructure, our estates offer a unique, secure environment with a wide range of outdoor facilities. SMS Vipingo to 22365 or call us today on 0740-400-215. Terms and conditions apply. You're watching Daring Abroad, brought to you in partnership with Copbank Diaspora Banking. Banking, just like home. Welcome back to the show. In the first part, we took you to Saudi Arabia, and now we cross over to Germany, 
where we meet a Kenyan who was a lawyer and is now a chef with her very own restaurant. Alex Chamwada spent some time with her and files this tasty story. Terrific, the decor chic, the food unique, and the hospitality epic. Welcome to Lakula Restaurant in Schembeck, Germany. Owned by Kenyan lawyer and chef Carol Waidera Mullenbrock, Lakula is the place to be for all those longing for a taste of home while in Deutschland. La Kula is Kula, we all know Kula, Swahili, Kukula. And then I wanted it to sound a, a little bit artistic, that is why I put the La Kula. And it also has a meaning, it means to eat together. Yeah, that was important for me, bringing people together, because that is my aim, to come and enjoy our African food. Because that is our tradition, we like enjoying food together. Yes, for seven years now, Carol has been bringing the best of African cuisine to this part of the world. I'm only open on Fridays, Saturdays and Sunday. And on Friday we have our African buffet. Saturday we have something we call curry, masala and co. So we have a lot of curry dishes and then like pilau, using uh, pilau masala, just different spices. And then on Sunday, I do Nairobi brunch. Nairobi brunch is where you find the mahamris and the mandazis and uji and wow. chai and mm -hmm. all those things we eat in the morning. We have a very nice view of our beer garden see, yes, outside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, but this is not for, for big uh, celebrations. When we have like a birthday celebration, we have okay. another room. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll show you. How many can you accommodate? Uh, about a hundred inside, inside here, here. Yeah. but outside in the beer garden we can do even 300. My cooking is different because I try to attach emotions to the food I cook. So I'm just not cooking to fill your stomach. I want you to feel the love that I have used or invested in cooking this food. I will dance, I will laugh with you, so you will remember me for something else. And you know what? We don't sell products, we sell emotions. This happens to be Carol's 17th year in Germany. She landed here in 2006. Her motivation? Love. I came to Germany with, with the man I had met. He was not yet my husband. And because I could not stay in the house, I was looking for something to do. And I looked for a, the only possible thing for me without the German language, because the German language is very difficult, was to work in a kitchen just cleaning dishes. This language barrier is what made Carol not practice law. But all was not lost. Having already joined the restaurant business, a spark was lit, igniting a long-lost passion of hers. I have always loved cooking. You know, when I was in Kenya, when there were parties at home, birthdays, they always said, Carol is cooking. I was always the one cooking. But I had not thought of this as, a, as something I would do for a living. It was a, a hobby. And then when I came now to Germany and I was in the big kitchen and that fascinated me a lot. When it came to a point where I could speak a little German, I told my boss, can I be coming when I'm not working and I be looking at what you are doing without you paying me? So I was having my days of working and then on my free days, I would go in, in the kitchen and just watch what they were doing and learn. What followed was Carol officially going for apprenticeship as a chef, a program that typically takes three years to complete, Carol only needed two. The German system is a bit different. It's called, it's a dual system. Dual means you go to school and work at the same time. So you have the theory and also the practical side, which is very, very good. So I was going to school two days a week and working in a restaurant, in a, in a kitchen, uh, four days a week. Um, I, I don't do the service yeah. because uh, my, my uh, place is the kitchen, uh, I'm the one who cooks. Uh, but of course, uh, being the, the owner of the business, I have to be like everywhere, mm, I mm. have to know what is happening, mm. I come and control if there are enough drinks because I have to do the ordering. And I would like to serve you something yeah, now. Yeah. <laughs> Good. 
That is how Lakula came into being. Since 2016, Carol has been able to create a name for herself in the restaurant business, hosting international delegations, government officials, foreigners, as well as locals, overcoming challenges every step of the way. The issue of the culture differences, which I have now, after 17 years, um, You're getting yeah, used to. I, I'm getting used to. But the, the mentality is not the same. The mentality is, is different. How the Germans think and you know relate to us. There is also the issue of racism, of course. We we have that. There are some people who will come here and they will think I am the lady who cleans the toilet because that is what many Africans do. Yeah, we don't have so many rooms. Uh -huh. We have um, 11 rooms. You have 11 rooms. Yeah, yeah it's just it's a nice way of combining the restaurant business mm. with, with somewhere where people can come and sleep mm. Mm. and also feel at home. Hey, my name is Christian Tiedemann. I'm living here in Schermbeck and I love to come to this place because it's a nice place and Carol is a very nice host. So uh, every time we are here, we have a drink together. My name is Brenda Muhongo. I live here in uh, Schermbeck and the food is very tasty. You just, feel, you just feel at home, you feel like you are in Kenya. After the success of running Lakula, the Jill of all trades decided it was time to begin another passion. I am known for dancing while doing chapatis and now I'm going into this digital um, world as a creator. I'm starting a podcast with a friend of mine which is called Far From Home Diaspora Conversations and in this podcast we want to be featuring our African people telling our stories. Yeah. But I did not give that choice. I was like, we are going with the Matatu, we are going with the Matatu. And then, <laughs> this is you how we do things in experience. Kenya. Yeah, this is, <laughs> I can imagine. I mean, but also inviting experts and uh, professionals like doctors and, you know, to inform many of us. There are so many people who come to Germany, they don't know what they're supposed to do. They don't know which, um, which tests I should do at the doc doctor's place. So we have a, a gynecologist, we have psychologists and all these people. Carol's story is one of reinvention, creativity, professionalism and seizing opportunities wherever they appear. A trait that the daughter of Nanyuki says is important for anyone wishing to make it here. Living abroad has taught me to be authentic, to be myself, to be very consistent in what I do. That is why I've been able to run this restaurant for the last seven years. The Ndururumu High School alumna is clearly living her best life and her advice to all who are inspired with her journey is start. You don't have to go abroad to succeed. You can succeed wherever you are. I am very, very confident that if I was in Kenya, I would be doing the same thing and I would be successful in it. It doesn't matter where you are. Thank you, Alex, for that inspiring story from Germany. Time now for our Back Home segment. And today, the show is all about all those who have wanted to enter into money markets but do not know how to start. Well, here is how. Back Home, powered by Cooperative Bank. My name is Samantha Kibuga. I'm the Managing Director Kingdom Securities. Kingdom Securities is a stock brokerage firm and a subsidiary of Cooperative Bank. We are the firm that helps you create wealth and currently regulated by the Capital Markets Authority. So what services or products do you have for anyone interested in investing through you? So the Nairobi Securities Exchange mainly has uh, listed companies and there are companies in various sectors. So you have the banking sectors, you have the manufacturing sector, you have the telecommunication sectors, there are various stock options for various uh, companies. And then there are also the government securities, so bonds that are also listed. Our clients are both institutional clients and retail clients. So retail clients are just any individual, any person who would like to invest in the stock exchange and our institutional clients are the corporations. Amazing, but the question has to be asked, what is the state of Kenya's stock market? 
Over the years, the Nairobi Securities Exchange has given very good returns. However, for the last 18 months, we've had a very challenging season for various reasons. However, this presents a very good opportunity for anyone to be investing in the market currently because the valuations have never been this low. We have companies that are paying dividends in the double digits, so you can do that. All the other stocks in the banking sector, in the telcos, are all below valuation. So this is definitely a good time. So I've made the decision, I want to invest. How do I start? If you would like to become a client of Kingdom Securities, we can do it two ways. We can do it the old school way, where you can walk into any of our branches, any of the bank branches, or you can visit our offices and the CBD. Or if you're in the diaspora, you can visit any of our agents out there and fill a physical form. Once you complete that form, then it will be forwarded to us. Alternatively, you can call us or email us and we will send you the link and you can self-register through any mobile device. Great, but what is unique about Kingdom Securities Limited? At Kingdom Securities, we've made it very simple for you. We have the app and you can open the app on any mobile device. It's uh, called the KSL Trader app. You can do the trades yourself or you can just simply send us an email and state, I would like you to buy me XYZ and we will proceed and buy for you. Now for Kenyans in the diaspora, they can invest where they are. So why should they invest in Kenya? Kenyans living abroad want to be involved in the economic growth of their country because eventually they want to come back home and what better way than to participate in the Nairobi Securities Exchange. Investing in the Nairobi Securities Exchange offers you liquidity because you can have your money back within as short as a day or three days, six days at most, as opposed to investing in a hard fixed asset. So even as we are encouraging Kenyans to save, and we have seen a lot of talking about Kenyan saving, then it's not important to just save. It's also important to make those savings work for you. And what better way than to look onto the financial markets to make that possible. And you can call on Kingdom to be your trusted investment broker for that. Cooperative Bank. We are you quite informative and that piece brings us to the end of the show today on behalf of the team responsible for this week's episode we say many thanks for watching and let's do this again next time Daring Abroad, brought to you in partnership with Cop Bank Diaspora Banking. Banking just like home.